Hello everybody. Okay, so the big day has arrived. We have our layout all surfaced with our grass mats and we have our pond done and we even have our bridge done. Now the last thing on the bridge that we did was um, we 3D printed those three bridge sections and then we cut out some uh, wooden blocks to serve as those piers and you can see that hold the bridge up and you can see those uh, gray pairs underneath. We painted those in a uh, in a stone type finish with some spray paint so they look uh, kind of granity. And the last thing we did was we glued those piers to the bottom of the bridge so the bridge is glued together as one unit. Now it's not glued in place on the pond itself. We can still slide it back and forth, but all the components are glued together. Um, and we use some Gorilla construction adhesive to do that. And you might be thinking that construction adhesive might be a little bit overkill for that, but uh, typically uh, we'll use construction adhesive when we really want a good permanent adhesion. And the gluing job isn't a finesse job, you know? And also we're gluing two different types of materials together. You know, we've got the PLA plastic from the 3D print and then we've got the painted wood and so uh, that construction adhesive will just grip both of those surfaces and will never let go. Um, if we have any problems with that gluing job we'll have to print a new bridge and uh, make some new piers but I think it turned out okay. We can still slide it up and down the pond you know depending on where our track crosses so um, I think we're good there. So I think we have a good solid surface all the way around here to start laying our flex track. Okay, so as we think about laying our track, we don't really have an overall plan um, you know, all mapped out. What I know that we wanna do is maximize the track length. So that usually means going as far out to the edge of the layout all around as we can. The further in we go, the more you reduce the footage of track that your train will be running on. So we wanna maximize that. So this loop here is gonna go pretty much around the periphery of the, of the layout. The one thing that we are most concerned about with the flex track is how to round the corners. So we have three hard corners, three 90 degree corners, and then we have a couple of soft corners that I'm less concerned about. So we've got this flex track. This flex, flex track is three feet long, 36 inches, and it, as the name implies, it flexes. So what we wanna do is take a piece of this track and go around a corner like this. Now. One of the things I'm also concerned about is, you know, getting this thing cut so that it is, makes, you know, a straight run to the next straight piece on both ends here. So what I think we're going to do is I've seen some tech, different techniques on YouTube. We've done a lot of uh, research. And one of the techniques that people use is to actually join two of these pieces together uh, straight just like, you know, kind of like that little gap there, but we'll uh, fix that. You know, they'll join them straight, solder them so that the joints don't move, and then, so that'll be a six foot piece, and then take that six foot piece and bend it around, you know, and then that'll give us the, we'll have enough to play with to make a nice curve, the joint will be in place, um, and hopefully we won't have to worry about that. So I think that's the technique we're gonna do. Um, and what we'll do is we'll make pieces for the three hard corners first and get those set, and then we'll fill in the straight pieces in between the corners. That's gonna be the plan. So the first thing that we're going to do is take two of these 36 inch pieces of track. We're gonna take them over to the workbench and kind of butt end them together with the connectors and then we're going to solder them and uh, then we'll take them back here and we'll you know bend the track into the curve and see where we're at okay we've gone over our track before uh, in a previous segment but just let's quickly review here so we have a whole bunch like we have four sets of five 36 inch pieces of track and you can see uh, two of those complete bundles sitting there over by the wall and then some of them you know we took apart here just to examine them and so forth so yeah we got a bunch of 36 inch pieces which is going to make up our loops and then we've got a couple of turnouts over here that we're going to try to work into the uh, into the layout and then we've got a, uh, a set of terminals 
that are built into connectors right there for our power supply. Then we've got some connectors. We got a couple of bumpers that we bought just in case we have some dead ends, you know, that we may want to put some, you know, kind of turnouts and things like that, maybe terminate in an engine shed or something like that. So we just bought those as a precaution in case we need them. And then we've got some track nippers here to nip the tracks. So anyway, so that's what we're working with uh, for our flex track layout. And so the first thing, like I said, we're going to do is deal with those corners and we're going to grab two of these pieces of track and we're going to solder uh, two of them together and then bend them around a corner and see how it works out. So, um, yeah, so let's give it a shot. Now, we've never soldered before. You are going to see us solder track for the first time. So uh, we've done a bunch of research on it. It looks fairly straightforward, but I'm sure there's going to be some, uh, you know, just some technique stuff that we just don't have yet that may influence this. But yeah, we'll we'll give it a shot and see where we're at. So anyway, next up, let's solder some track together. Okay, so before we get started soldering, there's a couple things that um, we want to talk about with this track. So again, this is the big three foot piece of track. We're kind of zoomed in on a section of it so you, don't, you can't see the whole thing, but this is a three, uh, three foot section. And a couple things here, one of these rails is fixed, so it doesn't slide in the little tie holders, but the other rail, and let me get this thing untangled here a little bit, you can see here that this will slide back and forth. And then if you look at the bottom, you can see here, let me just grab a pair of pliers so I can find all of these ties on the section that doesn't slide are all connected underneath the rail. And you can see on the side that does slide, and again I'll just pull this rail out just to show you it's the sliding section here, you'll notice that just about every other one the, the ties are tied together. So what we're going to do here, oh, the other thing too, is that when you bend this track, when we go to flex it, you'll see one rail is longer than the other. I'll just push that back and you can see that again. So when you bend the track, you always have, you have to cut it to make sure that your connecting track connects straight on to the end. So there's a little bit of trimming to do here. Now one of the things that we also have to do here is make sure that when we connect these two pieces of track, that these rail joiners here, these are the rail joiners, are going to slide up onto the rail and have enough room to. So what I've typically seen is that people cut away two of these ties so that they're exposing some rail here. And then we'll cut a tie uh, or two ties off of the other track that we're butting up against it. And then there'll be, you know, a kind of exposed section of rail that will accept the uh, the connector here. And then we'll solder those two pieces together. Basically to cut those ties off, all you do is you cut the little piece of brown plastic there that kind of keeps them connected together and they should slide right off. Um, so we'll we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, so uh, that's what we'll, we'll start with. We'll cut some ties off of the end of each piece of track that we're gonna butt up against. We'll put the connector on and then we'll go ahead and uh, attempt to solder. Okay, so we'll cut these ties off right here. I'm just gonna turn it over and you'll see that there are, you know, the piece of plastic there holding them on. So I am going to cut the little plastic sections here that connect the two and then we'll slide them right off. My knife might be in the way, but basically all I'm doing here is just kind of cutting through the uh, plastic there. And you'll hear a little snap there. Just don't go too far, you don't wanna cut into the rail and then these little pieces should just slide right off. So there we go. And then we just wanna make sure that these two rails are about the same distance from each other. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this one here, you'll notice that at the two tie, one is actually one of those empty spots between the ties. This one has the plastic, so we'll go ahead and cut that. The bench we're working on here is our, the bench that we do our YouTube shooting on. So you'll notice here I'm working on a piece of um, scrap wood here. I'm doing that also because of the soldering that we have to do, keep the bench protected from the soldering. So now what I'll do is just put in place the two pieces of track, butt it up here. 
Now, I think one thing I'm, I might do, and I've seen people do this before, is I think I'm going to take those a uh, couple of these ties here. I'll cut them away from each other, and then I'm going to slide them back out of the way. And then when we have our pieces, I can piece of solder together, I can slide them up so that there's not a big gap here that we have to later uh, fill in. So this is kind of a game time decision here, what we're doing. So I'm just going to cut these away as separate ties. So all that means is I'm just going to cut the plastic little pieces off of here. Okay, so you, you can see the little nubs that I cut away. Um, so basically now we can just slide these right back onto the piece of track here. And then the good thing is, is that once we get them on, if we can get them on, we'll just slide them back out of the way. Do you see that? And we still have enough room to solder. I'm just trimming off now just some more of this uh, plastic here. And again, my hands might be in the way, but really all I'm doing is just trimming off that extra plastic. All right, and then we'll slide this tie on the other rail and just push it all the way back. And like I said, that just reduces the amount of filling in we'll have to do later on. But the point, but the basic point is, is that we want to keep those ties away so that we can get the connector on and we don't burn the ties with the soldering iron. So now we're going to go ahead and push these connectors on. And like I said, guys, we're doing this for the first time. We've never worked with FlexTrack before. We haven't practiced. Everything you're seeing here, we are doing for the first time. Those slid on pretty good. Um, yeah, that's uh, I got a little flange there, and I'm going to take a little pair of pliers here. I was kind of half expecting to need um, micro pliers to push those uh, ties on, uh, to push the connectors on, but I, I didn't really, I didn't need them. And we can just cut that off with a razor knife. The razor knife will go right through that thin metal. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is push that other rail on. One went in nice, the other not so much. Now in the end, what you want is to make sure that you've got equal distance uh, on that connector. So you don't have to take a ruler to it or anything like that, but you know, just as long as it looks like there's an even amount of connector on both sides of the rail is what you're looking for. So a couple principles here to, to think about when you're, when you're soldering. When you think about the rail and you think about the wheels on the rail, there's a flange on the wheel that goes on the inside of the rail, right? So we don't want anything that's going to interfere with the wheel running along the inside of that rail. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to solder on the outside of the rail and leave the inside of that rail clean. And this is going to do two, obviously the, the solder is going to do two things. It's really going to hold that joint in place so you can't pull it apart, at least with a normal amount of force. And then it also is uh, conductive. When we first talked about doing flex track, we were thinking about just doing the connectors and uh, hoping for the best. But the more research we did online and all that and on YouTube with some of the other experts on there who um, were super helpful uh, watching those videos, almost everybody seems to be uh, soldering their joints. So we feel like we really can't get away without doing it. Um, I have some rosin flux here. So we're going to flux the outside. Uh, and then, then that, what that does is that basically helps the solder move into the joints, into the empty spaces around the connector and the rail through capillary action. But we're just going to do it on one side. So I'm going to put some rosin on here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, some flux on there. And then we'll grab the soldering iron and see what kind of a job we can do here. So. Okay, so I just grabbed a toothpick here. Um, you could use a brush. I think brush is probably one of the preferred tools here. But um, 
I think we'll just kind of smear it on with some uh, with a toothpick here. I don't think you have to worry about how much you put on because it'll, it'll burn away with the uh, with the soldering here. So we're just going to place it in here with the um, toothpick. Hopefully that'll work. The solder we're using is also a flux core solder. So this is what we bought off of Amazon here, rosin core solder. It's a very narrow uh, diameter. All right, so basically here, grab our soldering iron. Again, it's gonna be hard for him to get a good shot here because my hands will be in the way, I'm sure, a little bit. Um, let's just burn this off here. We may want to do what's called tinning the end here. Okay, so we're just gonna take our solder we're going to put that right here, and we're just going to melt it in there. All right, that's our first solder joint ever. It's a pretty small target. I'm probably overdoing it here, but um, yeah. So that's what that looks like. It could be a little bit neater, I think. But um, again, first time, I'm just gonna take the soldering iron and just try to melt away some of that excess. Maybe neaten it up a little bit. All right, so there's joint number one. We'll let that cool for a second, and then we're gonna f what we're gonna do is flip the track so that the other outside is facing me. Um, I'm not gonna go back and try to get it from the back angle there. All right, so we just flipped the track around. We just did it off camera here. Uh, just gave the uh, gave the track a flip, and you can see here there's our other joint there. So. Not the neatest, but not bad for a first try, I don't think. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, one of the things also that you wanna make sure you do is make sure that those rails, I had mentioned earlier about making sure that the, the two butt ends of the rail are right in the center of that connector. Uh, but you also wanna make sure that your rails are butted together as close as possible too. So you wanna make sure that everything's all nice and tight. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's find our toothpick here. We'll do the other side. So again, a little bit of flux. And I just used, by the way, for solder, I just used the solder that I had on hand. There's no, I don't know if there's any particular like rail solder per se, like hobbyists, hobbyist solder, I guess, <laughs> for railroading. I think you just use like kind of electronic grade um, solder, like not plumbing solder, but uh, not anything like that. So I'm just going to kind of again put that flux in there as best I can with the toothpick. And this stuff here you can slop around, like I said, it burns away, you can wipe it away when it's all said and done. Okay, make sure my rails are butted up against nice. And, oops, move my toothpick there. And here we go for joint number two. If your <clears throat> solder gets stuck to the rail you, you, while you're holding it in your hands, you can just, uh, you know, kind of pull, you just put the solder iron against it and just melt it and it will pull away.
Again, not the neatest job. I'm hoping our technique improves as time goes on here. All right, that's not too bad. Again, a little messy, but like I said, I hope our technique improves. But yeah, so there we go. There is a, some solder there. There's a little lump up here on the top of this rail over here. So I'm just going to take the soldering iron and just try to melt that away. Yeah, so that melted away pretty good. Maybe I'll just do the same thing over here. Just make sure that that's nice and smooth over the top. Okay. I think our big test here, yeah, that's a lot of solder on there. That does look a little crazy, but Let's see if we can smooth that out a bit. I think there are some post soldering techniques you can also use to clean that up a little bit and age it and make it blend in a little bit. But um, yeah. All right, so a big test here is going to be uh, we're going to take a rail car and we're going to roll it over there once this cools off and see if our rail car rolls over nice and, nice and smooth. Um, so, and that'll be the real test right there. Okay, so with this, uh, so with this um, connection here all, uh, all cooled off here, I just kind of cleaned it up here with this little uh, track cleaner that we have. Just gave it a little brush over here and you can see it's nice and smooth here. Um, we'll go ahead and throw a car on there, one of our HO cars. And uh, oh, this is actually one of our homemade uh, 3D printed cars. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go ahead and just roll that over. That was kind of a little bit in fast motion there, but um, we'll do it again. So you can see there it uh, rolls over pretty nice. It's going to make a little sound going over a joint in the tracks anyway. So um, this, the, but I can tell you here, even if you can't tell on camera, it rolls over pretty smooth. So we're pretty happy with that joint. All right, guys, so we have this uh, piece of track now tacked down um, onto our layout here. Uh, we tacked it down with red tacks, just so you can see where we tacked it down to the place. This track really curves very easily. Um, we just popped it down, stuck the tacks in it. We didn't film it because it, we thought we would test it and then do it. but. It's um, if this is this is a single piece of track, not that six foot one we just created, but it just right around like that. Look at that. It, it almost wants to like go in a certain radius, so you don't really have to do much to get the radius you're looking for. Just kind of eyeball it, and it kind of bends right where it should. And then the track has these little holes in every six inches or so on the ties, and so you, we just popped a pin through those holes that fit these uh, push pins that you'd use on a bulletin board worked fine you don't have to do every hole just enough to hold the track in a place um, yeah so this is where our track is going to go and let's take a look at the joint if we come over here with the camera here's the joint we just made now one of the things that we wanted to avoid was putting the joint like right at the crest of the turn you know putting stress on that joint so you'll notice here the joint is kind of around the corner where we're starting to straighten out a little bit um, and i think that'll that'll work good but um yeah not bad for a first pass so what we're going to do now is we have if you look at the far end there we have that corner to round is we make our way around these corners aren't bad these are kind of soft corners that you know we're not too too worried about those are softer corners but then we have another hard corner over here so we're going to solder uh, two more sets of these uh, kind of uh, six foot pieces of track here to round those corners, put them in each one of the corners they belong in, and then we'll start filling in in between those corners. We'll do all the soldering we can do on the bench, you know, so we're not soldering on the, on the grass, but we will have to solder on the grass at some point, especially when we go to fill in those straight pieces. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our first corner, as we just um, said a few minutes ago, is all tacked down. This is our second corner over here with two more pieces. So this, uh, I'll tell you, this three foot flex track really goes a long way. I think we way overbought, but at least we'll have extra. But here's the second joint that we just, um, that we just made. Um, 
Again, maybe a little rough, but the uh, train car goes over it pretty easily. So, um, so that's pretty good. Happy with that. Um, Cause that's really the most important thing is how smooth the car goes over or the rolling stock or whatever f to prevent derailments and things like that. And also the connectivity. So um, hopefully we'll have good luck with that. Now where these two corners meet, this is going to be the tricky part is right here. So we have it overlapped a little bit. Um, so with these two corners uh, kind of done and tacked down, now it's time to join this piece of track with this piece of track. So, and then that'll keep, that'll have one end of our layout all, pretty much all soldered and done. Not necessarily tacked, we have it temporarily tacked down, but we'll permanently tack it down a little bit later. So what we want to do here is cut these rails so that they just meet each other and they meet each other nice and squarely. So there's a tool that you can use for that, and that is this pair of rail nippers. Um, I think this is by uh, Zoran or Zoran. Um, I've seen these, uh, you know, on the, on, you know, other model railroaders using them on YouTube. They are a pretty good product. We bought these at Charles Rowe on our last visit. And on this piece of, on these pliers here, there's going to be a flat end or a side, sorry. And there's going to be a beveled side. The flat side goes to the track that you want to keep. The beveled side goes to the scrap or the track that you're not going to use um, for this particular run. So anyway, um, we're just going to eyeball this. Um, I'm going to cut off one, one end of one track so that we have that all settled. And then we'll put the other track on top of it. We'll find out where we should cut it and then we'll do that. For the moment, what I'm going to do is just tack this guy out of the way. Just temporarily. And as you can see here, these rails aren't too, too bad. They're pretty, they're pretty much lined up okay. Um, so that's pretty good. But we still actually have to cut a tie away, a tie or two away on this. And we've already got this kind of tacked down. So that'll be a little bit tricky, but um, we'll give it a shot. So anyway, like I said, I'm just going to eyeball this. So I am going to cut, and let's make sure we don't cut off too much. Yeah, so I can cut off. I'm just going to go down to like this the second rail right here. I'm going to untack this just so I can lift it up a little bit. And we're going to go right here. That makes a nice cut. And then right here. I'm just going to take my razor knife and I'm going to get underneath here and I'm going to cut our two ties away. So right there. Right there. Okay, so we have our two uh, ends here cut off, and then we took away our ties. Um, one thing that we probably want to do here, and just to make sure that we have good track, is we'll just take a file, and you know, if we roughed it up somehow, you know, we want to take away those burrs. Doesn't take much. Okay, and the other trick too is that these joiners, when they come out of the package on Atlas, they're connected in groups of two or four, but they get these little kind of tabs that they connect with. And so some of the times these things, when you break them off, they're kind of tilted down and, you know, they may do something to the, you know, to the lay of your track. So I just take these little end nippers here and just cut those off. And then that makes the, that'll make the connector sit nice and flat. So now that we have these two straightened out here, we are going to be, we want to make sure that we cut this in the right spot. If you look down there, you can see that rail almost meets this tie right here. Okay, this, um, uh, let's see if I can point that out better. That tie right there. So we're going to cut right there. And even if it's a little, even if there's a little gap, we can take the, that little small tiny gap out from this corner here and just move that in and that'll be just fine. Um, it, it'll only be, you know, a millimeter or two really. There we go. There 
you don't really want to pull off very easily here. There we go. Now it's sliding. Okay. So here we are right here without those ties on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut. Again, we want the flat side. This is the keeper piece of track here, right? So we want to uh, make sure the flat side of those pliers are on this side. So I'm just going to eyeball this. This isn't rocket science here, you know, this is just doing the best you can. And I'm kind of looking down on the top of the rail there so I can see it and just give it a nip. Very nice. Same thing here. You can see that right there. That butt end looks good. So we're going to find the same butt end over here on this one and give it a nip. Now, that was a little rough. These, these nippers are supposed to cut from the top of the track to the bottom of the track. And um, what these things ended up doing on a couple of times I've, I've cut the track is they've actually turned the track on its side. Um, and there's really nothing I could do about that. But um, yeah, we'll just file it and make the ends as neat as we can and just kind of go from there. And again, just hit those burrs as best you can. Okay. Next thing we want to do is we want to kind of fill in our little tie dead spaces here. So I think we probably want a couple of ties, add a couple of ties back in. These ones here are all hooked up and ready to go. So I'm just going to cut, use my razor knife, cut the ends off. here. Actually, I'm going to cut these ones off too because we really want to push those back as far as we can. So we want to get those spacers out of there. All right. So we got that. Put them back on here. They really can be kind of tough to see. I just want to do a little bit more trimming here. That one doesn't really quite look very good. And as you can see, the top of those ties, you can see they have these little uh, notches that the track runs through. It's probably obvious and goes without saying, but as long as we're looking at the ties, we'll go ahead and check that out. Okay, so we'll push those two ties right to the end so we still have enough space there. Um, and we won't have too, too much of a gap. All right, so that's not bad right there. I think that's probably going to work out pretty good. So let's go ahead and we'll put our joiner on. Joiner one. <laughs> Got to get my hand right. Joiner two. Okay. And by the way, again, probably goes without saying, make sure that the joiner, when it grabs the bottom of that rail, is grabbing it on both sides of the rail. All right. Make sure those rails are butted up as best as they, best as you can. Again, make sure that joint is right in the middle. Oops, too far. There we go, like that. And we'll tack it down. That should keep everything in place. The mat underneath when we solder because again, this is pretty hot stuff. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use an old sanding disc. I feel like that will probably, ooh, that's hook and loop. So let me put on that side there. And I'll, I just want to create a barrier between this and the grass. 
Again, I'm just going to adjust those. Okay. This time I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and flux both sides. Like I said before, it doesn't take much. Now there's probably more efficient ways to join track when it's right on the when it's right on the layout. And I've seen a bunch of videos where where they pretty much solder everything in place, not necessarily in a, on a bench like we did before. So again, our technique could improve, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, like I said, we're just doing this for the first time, and I'm sure we'll be happy with the outcome here. All right, so there's some flux on there. Again, just make sure those rails are butted up to each other. Don't give the rolling stock any excuse to derail here. All right, we'll do this side first. Again, I'm just going to grab the end of that solder. And I'll try to keep my hands out of the way so you can see what's going on. Maybe I'll give that a little curve in. My solder stick was sticking a little bit to the joint. And again, if you get little bubbles and things like that, just melt them down. Now I have a lot of solder on top of that rail I'll have to get off in a second. Not a great solder, but I think it'll, we can make it work. All right, that doesn't look too, too bad. We'll let that cool and then we'll run the, the track, uh, you know, the track cleaner over it and smooth that down. But I think that should be all right. Maybe I can knock this little bubble of solder down a little bit. Again, if I have to prioritize anything with this soldering job, I will take connectivity over looks any day. So we want to make sure that we get good connectivity. All right. Should be good. All right. That's cool enough, I think. So we're going to go ahead and just run our track. I can, I can feel that it's rough. I know people have different thoughts on running sandpaper and, or kind of abrasives across a track. I don't know. I feel like it's important to get the stuff off. So if we run our, do our car test here, it seems to be going over there pretty smooth. 
I'm going to put my little pressure on my finger in here, see if I can feel any irregularities. Um, yeah, I think it's probably going to be good enough. I may run a little bit of sandpaper over that really after it dries even, after it cools off even more. Maybe get the inside of that rail where the flanges go. Might have got a little solder in there. Yeah, it doesn't feel any worse than like just a regular, you know, joint with just the connectors. So, all right. I think we're going to be happy with this. Move our ties up into place here. When we cut the track before, we were using the nippers that we bought, and those work pretty good. Um, I'm sure lots of people use those without any problems at all. I found that when we were using the nippers that um, the track was rolling in it, and you're supposed to cut top of the rail to the bottom of the rail with those nippers, which is our intention, but it always turned out that um, the uh, rail rolled in it. So we're gonna try a different technique here. We're going to go and use our Dremel. Way over here, there's the joint that we, oops, let me get over there. There's the joint that we did on the bench where we joined the two three foot pieces of track together and it continues right around here. Okay, so here is our final connection right here. We cut those rails so that they meet um, almost perfectly. But if they didn't, we could actually release some of the push pins that we have holding the rest of the track in place and move it in or out. You know, you can make minor adjustments just, um, you know, if you don't get it absolutely perfect. But um, this is pretty good. We're pretty happy with this. So I'm going to throw our kind of fake ties on here. Uh, we have to do a couple more things to really kind of button this whole track layout up. And the first thing is to fill these gaps right here that, um, you know, when we did the joint, we did the connectors here, we had to, you know, take ties off in order for the joints to, or the connectors to fit. Now these ones here kind of offset each other um, when we bent the track. So there was a few more ties that were taken out of here in order to do that. So what we want to do is replace some ties under here, not so much to put in the track, but to just make it cosmetically look, um, look better. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some old ties that were stripped off during the course of the uh, installation here. And the first thing we have to do though, is strip away what we don't need. So these ties have the little um, things here that hold the rails in place. So these would be like these guys, right? If you can see these here, these uh, things, there's a name for them. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but um, that hold the rail in place. So we don't really need those for this. We just really want the um, aesthetic look of the tie, but we want to take those little things off because the rail won't sit in them and they'll just add height to the rail. And we just really want the rail to sit flat on this. So I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to strip those things off. So I have, a, I have a little bundle of two ties here. Okay, and if I look at those sideways, you know, you can't really, I don't know if you can catch that on the camera, maybe, maybe not, but um, yeah. So um, basically the, the, tra the track will just sit flat on those. And I'm also gonna peel away these little 
connectors here that connected the ties when they were on the rail. So we're just left with a couple of ties here. So it looks like here we'll be able to fit three ties. Here's some ones that were just pre-stripped, just so that, uh, just so you know, I'm not gonna, I don't need to strip these because I've already taken those little things off. So it looks like three ties here will make this look fairly normal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, this is the kind of the few times that we actually glue. So here, these aren't gonna be attached to the rails at all. They're just gonna kind of sit under. So I'm just gonna spread a little glue under here just to hold the ties to the grass mat. And don't worry about the amount of glue I'm using. These, um, this glue will, will uh, dry completely transparent. So uh, you won't even notice this when it's done. We've already tested this on a couple of things here. So I'm just gonna place these ties under here. I think I'll need another little dab of glue right here. And then we'll place that tie under there. We'll space them correctly. And like I said, that glue will dry. Oh, maybe that needs to be pushed under there just a tiny bit more. You can just eyeball these. It's not an exact science. Um, you know, on real railroads, they're probably a little off, you know? So anyway, so we have to go around the entire uh, layout or the entire loop that we created, find the joints, and then replace ties so that it looks like one continuous um, rail. Uh, you know, one continuous uh, uh, length of track. Okay, we'll just show you one more uh, example here. So what we want to do here is see how many ties we want. Now, here's a thing of ties that I we cut away from one of the rails because we had to cut quite a bit off the rail. And so we just pulled those ties off just as a big unit. So this will make it easier. I can just sit this down here and I can just lie it across the track and just kind of gauge how many ties I need. And it looks like I can probably get away with, looks like I need five ties there. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut off the ties, I, the tie I don't need. Why that across? And I think that'll look pretty good. So again, we're going to take our white glue. We'll spread it down here. And we could add glue afterwards. This is just kind of get it under the tie. And this will hold the tie to that grass mat pretty nicely. We'll lift this up if we can, but again, it's nailed in some places, so we might have a little leeway here to lift it, but we might not have a lot. So we might, some of them we had to literally just slide them right under the rail because the rail was kind of fastened to the, um, you know, to the, to the plywood. But if you look at that, and again, this glue will dry completely clear, so you won't even know that there was any glue there. Um, but yeah, so there's a little tie repair right there. Now, the other thing we need to do is if you see these little holes here, and this is, we won't put one in, the, in this fake uh, tie here, but you can see like a hole here, a hole here. What we did when we tested the track was it was pinned down with those push pins. And I, I'm not sure where this little segment here is gonna be edited into the video, so I may have already mentioned this. Um, but anyway, we just did it like periodically around the layout temporarily just to hold the track in place while we, you know, uh, formed the curves and we did the testing. Um, when we did the testing, we pulled the push pins out and we replaced them with nails. Um, we have little nails, we'll show you how to do that. Um, but what we want to do now that we're happy with the way the layout is and it's going to be a permanent fixture, we're going to go around to each one of these holes all around the track and we're going to put a nail in there and then nail this to the, to the plywood here permanently. So first things first, we're going to go around and do all the ties and then we're going to do all the nailing. Okay, so what we're going to start here is that we've got a little nail right here, and you can buy these on Amazon. Just look for HO scale track nails, and you'll, you'll see them. But this is the nail right here. We've got a hole right here, and there's a couple methods that you can do. You can just, you know, just stick it in the hole here, and it'll even stand up on its own if you just start. Now, you can use a tack hammer like this. You know, this has a very small head that will fit in between the rails because what you don't want to do is use a hammer that's going to end up hitting these rails. You don't want to damage those in any way. So you can use a tack hammer for that or I have this small, just kind of, um, you know, regular uh, standard hammer head here. Um, the head's a little wide, so this may hit the rails. So what I might do here is just kind of start it and then finish it off either with the tack hammer or use a nail punch here. I 
and there you go. So don't over tighten or over tighten. Uh, don't over hammer because you don't want to damage the tie. You just want it to hold the track. So let's do one more. We have a baggie of nails here. I think we have enough to go around the layout. So again, hit every hole. I'll just pop it in there. My preference is to use this hammer, not the tack hammer. Um, and just do it partially down. Don't hit the rail or stop before you hit the rail. Then take your nail punch. This nail went in a little bit cock cockeyed here, so hopefully it will go in straight. Yeah, not bad. Again, don't over tighten. Just when you get it down there, um, you know, just make sure it's, it, the track is firmly being held against the plywood. And now here's another hole here. So basically, we're just going to repeat this process probably a hundred more times uh, before we're done. But after that, your track will be uh, fastened to the plywood. All your ties, voids will be filled in. And then the probably the next thing to do to really make the track look permanent is to ballast it. Now we're gonna ballast this track, but we're not gonna do it as part of this series. We'll do it as a follow-up. All right, guys, so there you have it. This is the completed initial loop of our Atlas Flex Track. And you can see that all of the joints are filled in a little far away there but all of the joints are filled in with ties and the track is nailed down permanently and uh yeah so i think that's going to do it for part five here and the next part we are going to put power to the track and then we are going to test it out on some of our locomotives so that'll be exciting to get it all fired up and get some locomotives running on it so We'll see you in the next video.